All right, doctor, your time starts. Uh, hello, I am Dr. Mufti. I am the doctor today in the joint clinic. As you miss, uh, Mrs. Dollar is um, bright, 58 years old. Doctor, I am Dollar Sambridge, 58 years. Okay, today we are here to discuss regarding your the health condition. Is it okay with you? That's okay, doctor. Do you want anybody else to attend this meeting? No, I came here alone, doctor. Uh, okay. And how would you like uh, to be addressed? Call me Dolores. Okay. Uh, so, Mrs. Dolores, uh, uh, before uh, we can start, uh, can you tell me how much do you know about your condition? Doctor, recently I've been suffering from a low, I mean, this fever. And it's like just 100 or 101 degree find at some times. And I have this terrible pain in my joints. Sometimes they're so stiff that I can barely move them. I have difficulty in you know, rising up from my chair and I feel extremely tired. I mean, I've never felt so tired ever. I feel like just lying on the bed as long as possible, doctor. And I've even noticed that I have been losing weight. And with the symptoms, I've been to my GP. And I do not know what's happening to me, doctor. Why I suddenly became so ill. Uh, I'm really sorry for the suffering uh, you have. Uh, can you tell me what are your expectations from our meeting today? Doctor, I find it very painful, doctor. My life, you know, it has changed since I have had this pain. And I feel so tired. I feel like I won't be able to do anything ahead. It feels like I have some kind of cancer, something very serious happening to me, doctor. Okay. Okay, Mrs. Dolores, uh, do you stay, uh, right now have pain? Do you want any painkiller at the moment? I've tried painkillers, but they're not working. Uh, Neem, for this uh, session, do you need uh, painkillers? Uh, we can give you painkillers to relieve your pain and we'll continue the session. Thank you, doctor. That would be lovely. You can continue. Okay, so today we got uh, all of your uh, test results. And uh, I'm uh, really sorry to tell you that uh, you are suffering uh, from a disease called polymyalgia rheumatica. Have you ever heard about it? Polymyalgia rheumatica. Are, are you trying to mean I've got something like rheumatoid arthritis? I mean, I've had rheumatoid, I mean, somewhere, but I know some people with rheumatoid arthritis. Are you meaning that? Yeah. Uh, no, no, it is not. It is something different. Uh, let me explain you. So it is a condition in which your uh, defense system has some problem. Normally, the defense system is supposed to act against the bugs and infection. But in your case, it is misdirected uh, to your uh, different parts of uh, bodies like your joints, your muscles. That is why you are having these problems of uh, pains and uh, tiredness. Uh, are you following me? I'm following you, doctor. Is it something serious, doctor? So uh, this is uh, uh, not curable, but uh, this is controllable disease. Uh, there are medications which can control your symptoms. Uh, do you have any concern at the moment? So, I mean, you, you can cure my symptoms, doctor? I mean, I just want to feel better like before. Over the last one yeah. month, my health has deteriorated so much that I, I don't get to do any activities at all. Uh, yes, I am really sorry for your sufferings. Uh, yes, the management uh, team has decided to start you on a treatment, uh, which is called uh, steroid. Uh, this is going to... Uh, decrease your or calm your defense system and in that way your symptoms are going to be improved no, it's, my goodness i mean they're not good medication i've heard about them before like i i told you about your arteries right one of my aunt she was on steroids 
and she had an awful experience with it. So many side effects if you take this medication. Uh, yes, I appreciate your thought. Uh, there are uh, side effects like every other medication, steroid uh, has its own side effect. But uh, they, if they are given in high doses for a uh, prolonged time, period of time, uh, then the patients have side effects. Rest assured that we are going to start you on a minimal possible dose and uh, there will be a regular follow-up and close monitoring for any appearance of side effects. So is it okay with you? No, doctor, I, I think not. I'm already 58 years and I'm aging, doctor. And I, I've seen what steroids can do. I mean, the physical and changes like with the appearance. And moreover, I've learned that steroids, they like raise your blood pressure. My, I have high blood pressure for 10 years. And I wonder if this medication would be safe for me. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Dolores, uh, I appreciate that uh, you are very concerned about your health. Let me uh, try to explain you how can we be helpful to you even if we start steroids. So I would like to tell you regarding uh, some side effects, uh, common side effects of steroid and how we are going to deal with that. Is it okay with you? Can we proceed? Of course, I would love to know everything. Like what side okay. effects are we looking forward to? So few of the common side effects, one is uh, weight gain, but uh, for that uh, we can uh, involve a dietitian who is going to make a balanced uh, diet and a healthy balanced diet for you. And she is going to monitor you throughout your journey for any weight changes. And the second uh, thing which is important, it, it can sometimes make your bones weak. For that, we are going to give you bone protective medications along with this. And uh, sometimes you can have uh, tummy upsets for that also, we are going to give you tummy protections. So you are not going to have these symptoms of bone pain, tummy upsets or weight gain. And uh, regarding hypertension also, yes, this is one of the side effect, but we are going to be closely monitoring you with regular follow-ups. And uh, we can always alter your uh, blood pressure medications as well. So, uh, don't worry about the side effects. We are here to help you out and uh, we will be closely monitoring you for any side effects and we'll deal with them immediately. Doctor, I, I just wonder, my aunt who had rheumatoid arthritis, she developed diabetes after starting steroids. And I don't want uh, to have diabetes alongside. Uh, I really appreciate your concern. Yes, this is also one of the common side effects. Well, for that, uh, as I told you, we are going to involve the dietitian and uh, we are going to also involve the physical uh, physiotherapist, physical trainer, who is going to uh, modify your lifestyle a little bit. That's where you are not going to gain any weight and uh, we'll have a close uh, monitoring of your sugars. Do you have any other concern? I was just wondering, doctor, if you give me something alternate to steroids. I mean, I still am not very hopeful about this medication, doctor. I don't uh, want to take any risk. Aren't there any other uh, better medication than this, doctor? Uh, I really appreciate uh, your thoughts. But uh, as I told you, okay, this condition is a problem with your defense mechanism and steroid is really a very good medication which can calm down your defense uh, uh, system and will help you in this in uh, your symptoms so it has uh, been tried in many studies and it has shown to be very effective in controlling this uh, disease if we will not start uh, this medication then uh, you're going to suffer more and your symptoms are going to increase so your quality of is going to be impaired so what do you say about it? Doctor, I'm very worried, doctor. I'm still not convinced to take these steroids. Okay, you can uh, take some time, think about it. Uh, I will give you some leaflets, brochures, and the website. You can go through it and uh, have some time 
uh, read them carefully and then you can uh, make up your decision another doctor, one important thing, yes doctor yeah. yes i was yes, just go wondering on. like is there any pain killers or something that can help me with the pain is the pain yes. is killing me doctor okay we can uh, give you painkillers but uh, this is not going to affect your uh, defense system so on and also if you take the painkillers on high doses for long uh, period of time you can have different uh, problems and side effect related to the painkillers they can affect your kidneys they can affect your uh, tummy as well so the best option and uh, the maximum benefit what you can get is from uh, the drug steroid and doctor, another... I, I just wonder doctor so the steroids how long do you have to take it uh, so right now i cannot uh, tell you exact uh, time but it depends from patient to patient so we have to start it and uh, see how does you respond but it is uh, for a little uh, long period it is not uh, short courses it will be long but the exact time we cannot tell you we'll have to see the how your body behaves and what is your initial response to this okay so if we start you on a steroid there are a couple of things uh, important things you need to take care one thing is we are going to uh, give you an uh, alert bracelet which you have to wear Uh, because if you have uh, any problems uh, anywhere outside the hospital that the, the people around you can uh, see this uh, and uh, manage you appropriately or give you the medical attention as early as possible second thing uh, if you are on a steroid and you get any high temperatures or any sign of infection if two minutes you, left two minutes left you need to okay you need to increase the dose and contact the hospital immediately okay mrs uh, dorless can i ask you a few questions uh, do you smoke i do uh, how many cigarettes for how long five to six cigarettes a day so smoking is uh, not generally good for health it has a bad impact on your health so i strongly recommend you to stop smoking and we can help you by referring you to smoking cessation clinic is it all right with you okay and uh, what do you do for living okay mostly stay home i'm a retired postman okay is there anybody at home who is dependent on you i oh, yes doctor i have my kids so do you need uh, any help regarding that we have a lot of uh, support and help available in the form of social uh, workers and occupational health workers they can visit your home and help you if you need any help is it okay with you that would be lovely doctor but i just want myself to improve doctor i, I love to do th- things myself okay Th- that will be great and do you have any other concern no doctor so i'll be giving you my hospital contact number and if you have any queries or anything Uh, you can contact us and uh, we need to you need to sign a consent also uh, if you decide to start on a steroid doctor i i think i would think it over i mean i'm not ready to take the steroids i got to look up the side effects a bit more and then i mean to come to a decision will that be okay okay that will be okay and if you need we can arrange another meeting with the consultant and he will be in a better position Uh, to discuss this with you and uh, uh, you might uh, and your time sub doctor your time sub okay thank you 30 seconds to gather your thoughts All right, doctor. How did the scene go with the patient today? Uh, yes, Mrs. Uh, Dorless. Uh, she is fifty-eight year old, and uh, she was diagnosed with polymyalgia rheumatica. 
and uh, the task was uh, to can tell her about the diagnosis and the possible plan of management which includes starting steroids so initially she has a bad uh, experience in her family regarding this steroid and uh, she was a little reluctant uh, in starting steroids but i told her all the pawns and cons uh, for the steroid and how we are going to uh, manage any side effects and uh, she was uh, convinced uh, to think uh, over it and let us know about her opinion so i think the scenario went okay all right doctor so you feel like you convinced the patient to take the steroids Uh, no, I convinced her to uh, think about it, and probably after thinking, uh, she will agree. So she asked you if this condition, polymyelinematica, is very serious or not. What things do you consider when you reply to this question? Uh, uh, the most important thing I would like to tell her is that this is a problem with her defense mechanism, so it is not curable but we can control the symptoms. Uh, this is one important thing. And uh, uh, she, she can, with an appropriate management, she can have a good quality of life and there is uh, no impact on uh, the life expectancy as well. All right, so for this patient, you were planning to take, start on steroids. At what dose you plan to start on steroids? Uh, 15 mg per day. All right, and how long are you going to continue that? Uh, this is a long-term treatment. Uh, so the exact duration we cannot uh, tell this is long-term. And we'll see if we are able to prevent the side effects, fine, but probably- Any if, approximate duration? It will be in years, I think, so I'm not sure. All right. So you, you wanted to also give this patient an alert bracelet, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So what exactly, you know, would you uh, consider to write on the alert bracelet or if you give her a steroid card even? Uh, that the patient is on a steroid and uh, if there is a missed dose of a steroid or sudden withdrawal of a steroid, she can go into uh, addition crisis. So that's why we need this uh, bracelet. All right. That if she has any problem, so it can be dealt uh, immediately. So let's say this patient goes home and she starts thinking over how, whether to take steroids or not. And she comes to you within three days with, you know, with the complaints of blurring of vision. What would you consider? Then uh, I'll consider the association of polymyalgia rheumatica, that is temporal arthritis or joint cell arthritis. Did you mention because anything about this over... to her? Do you think she should have been counseled about it as well? Uh, yes, I think so, yes. If I would have, then she would have convinced. The life-threatening the other complications can be there. All right. What were the ethical issues in your case? The ethical issue is autonomy. The patient has the right to know about her condition and the management plan, and uh, she has the right to accept or refuse it. And the second is the beneficence. So beneficence is doing good for the patient. So we have investigated and uh, done the blood investigation that is beneficence, and we are planning to start, start steroid to control in symptoms. This is also beneficence. Third is non-maleficence, which is avoiding harm. So giving the steroid in an appropriate dose and to prevent the side effect uh, will be non-maleficence. And uh, telling her uh, about uh, uh, do not uh, abruptly stop steroid and if she gets fever she, or infection, she needs to double uh, this uh, the dose of steroid. And Fourth one is justice that we treat every patient equally regardless of the age, ethnicity, and gender. All right, doctor. So at this point, you're done with the case, but you move on to your next case. You'll do a station five. Okay. Okay.
Can you see your case? Yes, okay, now I can see. All right, just start preparing. Hello, I am Dr. Mufti. I'm the doctor in the medical admission unit today. Are you Mrs. Uh, Mr. Harris from Rafe is 62 years old? Yes, doctor, I am. Uh, okay, today I'm going to ask you a few questions and examine you. Uh, is it okay with you? That's okay with me, doctor. Okay, how would you like to be addressed? Call me Harris. Harris. Uh, okay, well, can you tell me what brings you here today, Mr. Oh, doctor, Harris? just a week back, I've noticed that you know there's a, a dull pain in the middle of my back, and this hasn't gone away, and it's getting steadily worse. And it, it is now there all the time, and any movement I make is painful. I just don't feel right in myself as I live on my own. The daily activities like washing, brushing, I know it's becoming quite difficult for me. Uh, since how long you said you have this pain? Doctor, it has been a week now. So before one week uh, in the past, do you have similar pain or not? No, doctor. Okay, how would you grade uh, this pain from uh, uh, 0 to 10? Uh, 0 being uh, nothing and 10 is more severe. I, I would grade it like 7 out of 10 now. Uh, okay. So uh, does uh, this pain stays in one place or it travels down or upward? Uh, well, the pain, okay, it, it doesn't go anyways, just uh, like in, in, in my middle back. Oh, okay, middle back. Okay, do you have uh, any uh, weakness of your uh, limbs? No. Uh, any needle and pain sensations? No. Any history of trauma? No, doctor. Okay. Any history of fall? No. Okay. Uh, is there anything that uh, aggravates your pain? Well, any movement is difficult for me, doctor. I mean, if I move, the pain orsens. Okay. Anything that uh, improves your pain other than rest? Nothing, doctor. Okay. Uh, do you have any morning stiffness? No. Any joint pains? Joint pains? No, doctor. Other than this back, any joint pain? No, it's just a back pain that's there affecting me. Okay. Any rashes anywhere in the body? No, doctor. I don't have any rashes. Any weight changes? I think over the last one week, I've lost weight. I mean, the, I mean, it's maybe I, I didn't measure it, but I can feel it that I have lost a bit of weight. Okay. Uh, do you have any lumps and bumps? I don't have any lumps and bumps anywhere, doctor. Any high temperature? I've been feeling feverish for a week now. Oh, for a week. Any recent travel history? I traveled to India. That was a year back. Uh, okay. Uh, any past medical history I should be aware of? Ah, uh, yes, doctor. Just one month ago, I had this lightheadedness and I fell. And the doctor still had some problem with the rhythm, which is later corrected after admission. Uh, but you don't know exactly what is that problem. They said I have had a heart block. Okay. Travel uh, Okay, man. Any dizziness? At the moment, no. Any change in your bowel habit? No. Any change in your water work? Perhaps it's a bit reduced for one day. Okay. So I would like to start my examination. I will okay. start with the hand. And uh, I will see any obvious uh, deformity, any color change. Or right. you, you want to see his hands? Yes. 
All right, so there you go. Can you see the hands? Uh, I can see, but difficult to see clubbing, spiritual hemorrhages. Can you tell me, is there any spiritual hemorrhages, Jainway lesions? No, you, you got to you got to pick up like how how you do like you know examine and look for them. I mean, there aren't any color changes in the hand, no hemorrhage apparently, oh. and when you feel them, uh, they don't seem to be tender. And clubbing, yeah, like an index finger, I looks like clubbing, but the other like it's exactly what the patient is like. You make your assumption. We will tell you that later. You just assume whatever you find. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, then uh, any sweating I can feel? You want to ask him about sweating or you feel no, for I will the feel, I can feel the sweating. We are sweating sober. where? Where are you feeling for it? Where are you In the palm. No palm. sweat. No sweating. I will check the pulse bilaterally. The is pulse it low is... volume? The, the patient has... The pulse rate at the moment is 90 beats per minute. Okay, and it's off. A, it's a bit of low volume. Yes. Okay, I will check the collapsing pulse now. I will. Uh, no collapsing tell. pulse. No collapse. Okay, I will ask for the blood pressure. Is it same as outside? The blood pressure at the moment you notice one hundred ten by fifty five. Okay, I will uh, go to the face. I will uh, see eyes for any anemia or join us. All right. So you have a look at him. Okay. I will look the oral cavity. You have two minutes left. Okay. I will see the oral cavity for the cyanosis or any ulcers. All right. You want to see the oral cavity? There aren't any cyanosis or ulcers. Okay, I will check the chest and precordium. There is a scar and bulging. I will focus there. All right, so you, this is the chest. I will uh, palpate if there is a device there. So you notice that there is a structure underneath. However, under here you don't find any structure. But there is something underneath, a hard kind of lump. Okay. And I will auscultate, uh, I will uh, auscultate the heart at apex and uh, at aortic area. All right, you want to auscultate the heart. All right, so this is what you hear. Just a minute. This is the apex. Can you hear it? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And at where else you want to auscultate? Aortic area. Okay. Uh, do you have any travel history? I traveled to India one year back. Oh, one year back. Okay. So, any family history? All right, doctor, you, your, your time's up. Tell us your positive findings and diagnosis. Okay, the 62-year-old presented with severe back pain and uh, uh, the pulse pressure is uh, wide and he has a temperature mentioned in the vitals, 38. And his pain is great. What are your positive findings, time. doctor? Uh, okay, positive finding. Uh, the patient... Uh, there is an scar in the chest underneath. Uh, there is a device, and there is another star, scar in the epigastric lower sternal area. And the uh, patient had a little bit of uh, clubbing, and uh, he is uh, pale. So, what's your diagnosis for him? So diagnosis. We cannot reach any diagnosis because I need to do the lower. Imagine this is the exam and you got to save yourself. You got to carry some marks. So mention anything that comes to your mind that's relevant. You still have time. Let's a one minute TikTok. So you got to score mark. 
whether you reach the diagnosis or not. So just try something, come up with a plan. Uh, I will, uh, my diagnosis would be ankylosing spondylitis uh, with a heart block and pacemaker uh, there. And that is the cause of his uh, back pain. Any other and, difference? Uh, second differential, I could put a malignancy because there is a history of uh, weight loss, uh, uh, fever, and uh, there is a back pain. Uh, so I will... What would be a management plan now? What would be a management plan? Uh, the management uh, plan will be patient education and uh, counseling. And uh, then for pain, uh, we will give uh, painkillers and uh, a, a review of interrogation of his uh, device as well as uh, echo to see uh, any problem. Uh, Why there. do you want to interrogate the device? Do you think it's a pacemaker or the device failure? Okay. No, okay, we'll do an X-ray of uh, lumbosacral and MRI of back. Okay, and, doctor. So uh, your time's up, doctor. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Mufti. I'm the doctor today in the medical unit. Are you Mr. Jesse Thomas, 50 years old? Yes, doctor. This is Jesse Thomas, 50 years uh, okay, today I'm here to talk uh, to you regarding your health condition and examine you. Is it all right with you? That's completely okay with me, doctor. How would you like to be addressed? You can call me Jesse. Okay, Mr. Jesse, before we start, can you tell me a little more about your condition? Uh, surely, doctor. Doctor, you know, I've come here with this sudden coughing out of blood. I've never coughed out blood, but just three days back, I woke up in the morning and I had this cough. And to my surprise, I coughed up a significant amount of blood. It would be like a uh, half glass full. And I've never coughed up blood. And that day it happened three times. And I have coughed up blood yesterday as well. And okay, before right on, I came to the any. Okay, before three days, uh, do you have uh, any history of cough in the past? Never, I never coughed out blood before. And without cough, do you have any history of uh, long-term coughing? No. Okay. I do have any... cough sometimes, doctor. I mean, I'm a smoker, so I, I take it as the smoker's cough. Mm, okay. Uh, uh, any shortness of breath? I'm not short of breath. Okay. Uh, is there anything that uh, increases your cough? Well, it came out, you know, it happened suddenly, doctor. I haven't noticed anything, you know, increasing my cough. Okay. Anything that improves it related to it? Well, it's not always that I have this cough. I had it suddenly, doctor. Or any specific uh, time when you have more cough, like uh, after getting up or uh, while sleeping at night? No. Oh. Okay. Do you have any chest pain? I don't have any chest pain. Uh, any weight changes? I haven't noticed any weight changes, doctor. Any lumps and bumps? No. Any high, temp uh, high temperature? No. Okay. Uh, any past uh, medical his history of significance I should be aware of? Uh, yes, doctor. Like I have visited my family doctor several times with tiredness. And a year back, I had these nose splits. Okay. And uh, I took it because of my sinusitis at times. I've had nose splits on and off. That's it, doctor. However, for the last one year, I was doing quite okay until two days back. I'm so worried now, doctor. I mean, th th there was some real quite a handful of cough there. I mean, I was so okay. scared when it happened. I'm really sorry uh, for your suffering. Hey, do you have uh, any other long-term uh, problem like high blood pressure or high sugar? No, doctor. Just any I have family? had nosebleeds one year okay. back. Any family history of similar complaint? My dad used to have nosebleeds as well. When I was young, I remember. 
then he died uh, you know at the age of 50 years okay do you have uh, any change in your water work any color change my water work is fine doctor water work is fine any changes in your bowel no it, it seems okay uh, any rashes i have got some rashes doctor i, I believe so yes where exactly can you show well I, i noticed them mostly in my hands doctor there there these red spots they have been there for quite a long time now any red spots uh, on your uh, lips or uh, inside your mouth perhaps doctor i mean i have noticed them when i have been brushing my teeth i noticed them sometimes but you can check for yourself uh, okay fine uh, any joint pains i don't usually have any joint pains okay start uh, my examination i will start from the hands and see if there are any visible telangiectasias or uh, particular patches so what what do you, what do you plan to examine first hands you want to check his hands yes all right so just let me give you his hands can you see his hands Oh, yes they okay. are a bit yellow and uh, palms can i see the palms let's see hopefully we we'll can over if it is hold a moment while examining i'll ask you do you have any change in your appetite no doctor uh, do you smoke i do smoke yes uh, how many cigarettes for how long oh well doctor that would be like 10 cigarettes a day for the last 10 years okay so smoking is not good for health i strongly recommend to you to stop it and will refer you to smoking cessation clinic and uh, examination i am doing it you will show me anything or i will continue oh sorry the uh, wait a moment please so what you do for uh, living uh, mr jesse doctor i am a driver okay do you have any vision problem you have two minutes left no i don't have any vision problem okay okay fine i will check the pulse bilaterally and i will take uh, the blood pressure all right so the and blood pressure see. is as given from the outside the pulse is around 100 beats per minute okay and the oral mucosa i will see for any telangiectasias and ulcers Just a moment. Just a moment. Okay, so you can check. This is the mouth of the patient. Okay. Okay, fine. And there was no rash in the hand on examination. And there was. There was. Okay. Okay, I will uh, uh, go to the chest and the uh, auscultate uh, his lung fields. All right. So when you auscultate his lung fields, you notice this. No bronchial breathing. I will auscultate all. yes doctor okay okay what is your concern but i'm just wondering why i coughed out blood so it uh, after taking the history and uh, 
examining it seems uh, like a suffering from a which runs in a family from one generation to another uh, that is why your father and you have a similar uh, problem and uh, for that we are going uh, to run some investigation in the form of uh, blood and probably imaging and make a team of doctors and uh, we'll arrange another doctor, meeting so to discuss your, your time's up now doctor tell us your positive findings and diagnosis so this uh, 30 year old Jesse presented with hemoptysis. He is tachycardic uh, with a pulse of 100. And uh, there is a nasal ulcers uh, with evidence of a little uh, uh, bleed. And uh, they, he has uh, yellow nails and paler conjunctiva as well as oral cavity. And there is an evidence of uh, 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 telangiectasias uh, in the oral cavity and a bronchial breath, breathing as well. So keeping this uh, in mind, uh, I, my diagnosis will be heredity tel uh, hemorrhagic telangiectasia. All right. So how can you investigate and manage this patient? Uh, so investigation will do a routine uh, lab investigation uh, doing uh, a CBC to look for the anemia and uh, uh, WBC for any current infections. Uh, ESR and CRP to rule out any inflammatory process. Then uh, RFT is uh, uh, to rule out any pulmonary renal syndromes and LFTs. Probably we are going to start them on some medications for baseline. How are you going to like evaluate his hemoptysis? Uh, for hemoptysis, uh, we are uh, going to do a uh, chest x-ray and probably later uh, CT chest. And along with that, uh, sputum analysis and uh, if needed, uh, bronchoscopy. All right, doctor. So thank you. Thank you. Levage. And just to ask you, like you, you found some rashes okay, for this patient. How do we cover that? Sorry? I, I could not appreciate uh, because it is a video. It's not live. I could not appreciate. All right. So no worries. Uh, just to... Sorry, I actually did, did the video didn't play. Just a moment. All right. Even if you, let's say you found some rashes over the hands. Okay. Oh. And in such case, how do you consider that this is not a vasculitis, but a telendictitia. I will uh, put vasculitis in my differential diagnosis. I'll be doctor. Thank you. Your time, sir. Just a moment. All right. Thank you, Dr. Keith. Uh, just to Check on others. Dr. Calvin, are you with us, Dr. Calvin? Dr. Anum. Oh, yes, uh, can you use your microphone? Like we need you to use a microphone at times. Dr. Mohamed Saad Mustafa, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay, good to see you. And hear from you, Doc. I haven't seen you yet. So, <clears throat> what are your differentials for both the cases? For this case, I think uh, we can think uh, we can consider uh, other causes of telangiectasia, uh, such as speed jiggle syndrome, for example. Uh, 
but the, but the negative is the patient does not have uh, any GI symptoms. Uh, All right. And what was your yeah. diagnosis for the previous case? Sorry? The previous case, the BCC1. Yeah, the previous case, I, I was thinking uh, of endocarditis. Uh, Just endocarditis, infective endocarditis, you mean? Yeah, infective. Yeah, infective endocarditis, of course. And, and of course, uh, enclosing the spondylitis, uh, causing uh, aortic regurgitation. And uh, it may be something uh, unrelated, such as osteomyelitis or septic arthritis. All right. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Dr. Shreb here, Dr. Usman, Desmond Gani. I should have checked your GCS. Dr. Nida, there. All right. I found both station five years. Dr. Calvin, are you back? Or are you going to go with the discussion just to hear from you? Are you there? Sir, excuse me, uh, just to confirm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, in the case with back pain and a device implanted in, in the upper of the chest, uh, mm -hmm. is this device is this device a, a defib defibrillator? No, it's a pacemaker. Pacemaker. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank like you. in in the exam, like in the exam, yeah. you might find a device that <clears throat> maybe to uh, <clears throat> like it's your is the impression. Okay. Like if it's very large, you can consider it to be an ICD. And mm. if you have seen pacemakers before, like with the size, you might feel it like this might be a pacemaker. Okay. Dr. Okay. Sadia okay. Fatima, what are your differentials, Dr. Sadia? Uh, can it be multiple myeloma as the patient has speller and uh, uh, the lung, uh, the heart problem could be because of um, hypercalcemia, electrolyte imbalance and... Um, he has backache and also uh, renal function impairment as he has uh, water work was decreased. Uh, but the age doesn't go there. He's quite young. I mean, the age, the patient's age wasn't, I mean, he wasn't that early. Okay. All right. Uh, he was 62. Okay. okay. You, you can consider okay. that, but you know, the, uh, the duration is very short six weeks. Could be a possibility. Anyone with back pain, if an elderly, you will out multiple myeloma. Okay. But duration was very short. <laughs> All right. We'll come to it. It's a very known case. It's a very known case. Many of you knew perhaps that you are not considering some important differentials alone. But it, the, this case is very old and um, it's quite known. You, you, you will, uh, the moment I say you're going to recognize it no worries okay. so can it be post pain can it be what doctor post pain pots uh, yes could be you have to look for if the patient has these gibbous i mean he didn't check the back so let's let's look into it yes many got the diagnosis though many are writing it in the chat box you're right you're right okay Let's go. So first of all, I'm sorry, Dr. Akif, actually, you know, this video is playing, but uh, it wasn't shared, perhaps. I do not know. All right. Actually, we played another video. There are a number of videos for this gentleman here. He is one of my patients, good patient. We used him in our mock recently with the Bangladeshi candidates. <laughs> okay. So let's have a look at this patient. And... Um, before we go to your uh, case, Dr. Akif, are you with us? Okay. You'd be happy yes, to I... know that these are exactly 
the cases that were in the exam in the same can also. Okay. And I'll show you the feedback first, then we go with the discussion. So this was a case of polymalgia rheumatica, okay? The one I gave you, and we're gonna discuss about that. There's a long discussion on it, okay? And right after you have this hemoptysis case, sorry, this is not the one. We, we didn't do the cluster headache, it was easier. Hemoptysis. But we try to do, keep one case here. Hemoptysis one, okay? History of nosebleed. And the number of things that has to be checked, the candidate got full mark, okay? Hemoptysis for how long, pale tongue, lean, and the things that you should be checking. There's a long list of checks, smoking history, family history, okay? Uh, tongue, lean, appetite, and all, whether you have checked the lungs, it's very important you check the lungs. Concern whether it's lung cancer, and very reassuring, okay? You told me as well that it's not a lung cancer. All right, we'll skip the headache. Nosebleed hemoptysis is worried about cancer. Okay, a bit of reassurance needed. All right, and we didn't keep the other. That's I mean the other one uh, was actually discitis. We recovered it from another feedback. We didn't give the class headache because we have done it recently. All right, so just to go with the scenario here. First of all, let's check. So it was polymyalgia rheumatica or discitis? It was discitis. Okay. All right. Okay. Any infection? I mean, you, you can feel like there wasn't any measured weight loss, Dr. Ann. He felt like he has lost weight. Okay. So let's have a look at this patient. Okay. You notice this patient has the several rashes over his face now. I mean, these are red spots and he has come to you with hemoptysis. And with the hemoptysis case, you have to auscultate the back and you got to figure out whether he has any brief. We'll, we'll talk about the sequence of exam for this case. Just to show you the videos we have in our hand. In the exam, you will not have access to a glass slide. However, you can have access to a glass. That means water bottle or a glass you can use to blanch the rash. So a quick exam that you have to do for such patient is look around if the patient is anemic and it's an important question to ask for any patients with the bleeding from anywhere. Like if the patient has hemoptysis, ask him if he has bleed from anywhere else, okay? And also for anyone who has pallor bleeding, you must inquire if the patient has had this bleed, okay, in the past and whether the patient needed any blood transfusion. And for any patient with Long-term bleed, you should be looking for signs of iron deficiency. So you notice this patient has got this mouth rashes there. You can call, these are also telendic tissues. You look for them in the soft palate, hot palate, underneath the tongue. Though you cannot blanch them there inside the mouth, but you can look for rashes around the mouth, if there are any. You got to look inside his nose and always if anyone has a history of epistaxis, you inquire that whether it was from both nostrils, from both nares, or just one side, whether he picked the nose, what whether it was recurrent. And if it's recurrent, then you have to think about a more systemic course. You got to ask him about any rashes anywhere. And he is dark complexion, but he has a number of red spots behind there, inside there. There's not noticeable in the video for now. We have several videos of him. 
Okay, I actually wanted to show you this hand. Unfortunately, the other hand came up. That was an old video though. And you turn it over and you notice that there are some red spots here. And they would be blanchable. So you said he had a hand rash. Uh, what was the rash? Can you show? I mean, this is the rash like... yeah. that I'm showing you. These are red spots, okay? So like, a, like they, they appear like purpura, okay? So when you blanch them, they're gone. They disappear. So that confirms that they're telangic tissues. If they were palpable, painful, and they were, did not disappear on blanching, then it would have been a vasculitic rash. And you have to match the constitutional symptoms of any wet change, fever, he had in any. Thanks to the candidates who have you know, helped with this video. And also when you notice their hands or their feet, you got to pick up if the patient has any coelunychia because long-term uh, blood loss, they can develop iron deficiency and they can have colonychia. Okay. All right. Now, just to wrap up, I mean, it has been a long session now. A patient with um, hair tree hemorrhagic dictitia is very common in the exam. Previously, these kind of patients were common in the UK, but we have had cases from, you know, like uh, we have had feedbacks, okay, from India and it goes far. I mean, there are certain centers in India like Kochi, uh, Bangalore, okay, they're quite well developed now. When Kochi is quite well developed, it's like you can now almost. And they haven't had a case from Pakistan yet with HST. But uh, there are several you know, feedbacks from the UK with uh, this kind of diagnosis. And patients with heterohemorrhagic telangiectasia can come up in the station one. It came several times and most of the candidates fail because they fail to recognize the rash. Okay, so they'll give you a case of an abdominal case and you'll find nothing but the patient has a rash inside the mouth. And that's it. In a respiratory case, maybe you know, you have a patient with these rashes over him, okay, in the hands, over the uh, body, and also you notice them inside his mouth. The respiratory exam is completely normal. Or you notice sometimes if it's the rash is uh, quite widespread alongside your patient has cyanosis, okay? Sometimes these patients who have artery and malformation, they can have cyanosis, clubbing, even you can hear a brie, okay? And these patients, okay, can even present in the exam. And that means... Mute, my dear doctor, mute. All right, thank you. Dr. Kiyoshi, I just I need to ask you something because you brought the issue of station one, abdominal station. There was mm -hmm. one experience shared by a doctor who did his exam in UK. He mm -hmm. said that when he entered, he, he found that there was telangiectasia on the mouth and on the palate. And he was very sure that it was a telangiectasia. But in the abdomen, there was right iliac fossa scar without underlying mass and left uh, colostomy bud. And they wanted him to correlate between the telangiectasia and the findings which is in the abdomen. So have you ever like uh, went through any similar experience or what could be the reason for this, uh, these scars? So, uh, as you say, the patient has a right iliac fossa scar. Yes. And uh, left sided colostomy. Left sided colostomy, yes. They were both in different sides. And under the right iliac fossa, there was no mass. Okay. So usually right-sided, you know, colonic cancers, or if you have uh, even um, carcinoma of the colon on the right side, they usually present very late because, you know, they're the uh, stool or the fecal matter is very 
liquid in that mm -hmm. portion of the gut. Whereas if you have something on the left side, okay, that can present as a mass. Mm -hmm. And for what you say, if I were in taking this exam, I'd first consider it to be an abdominal malignancy, which has been removed. And that's why the patient has a colostomy done now. Okay. So part of the colon is still there. That's why the colostomy or else there would be an eyelostomy. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. the side on the, if you find a scar on the right iliac fossa, and there could be two differentials for the scar at, at the moment. Okay. Like one is if there was any tumor, the other was if there was a previous eyelostomy, which has been closed. Okay. That could be one. And if you find nothing there, okay, if you find nothing there, so we simply consider these abdominal scars, that whether there has been an abdominal, uh, I mean, uh, maybe an abdominal malignancy, it could be IBD as well. So these are two differentials you must rule out on this setting. Now, considering the rash inside the mouth, you have to rule out whether the patient had, I mean, whether the di candidate actually diagnosed still in dictatia, it was Fused jigger syndrome, which can have uh, various hematomas and can be associated with abdominal malignancies. Okay, because if you haven't found any peripheral rashes, which you could blanch and say for sure that yes, this is telling tissue. If you just find rash inside the mouth, but I wonder, like the fused jigger syndrome, usually have this pigmentation in the lips. They're not inside the mouth. Okay, however, some patients with uh, other conditions can also have this telangic tissues, okay? But with hemorrhagic telangic tissue, I haven't, I, it's not known to me for any malignancy to be associated with it, okay? And- Is it possible that there was some kind of hemorrhage because of, because of AV malformation? So they had to do some kind of uh, bowel resection. Is it possible because to correlate, it could be, and usually they have GIT AV mal uh, formation. I mean, that's not a reason for colostomy. If they yeah. have a colostomy, then definitely there has been a growth in the colon, which has been removed. Okay? Not, mm -hmm. not or the patient had IBD. I mean, that, that should be the first differential. Forget the HST for such a case. I mean, that's, that's not, uh, you know, uh, very uh, reasonable explanation. Like if you consider HST for such a case, you can't explain it because HST is not associated with malignancy or something okay. that for which you're going to need a uh, colostomy. No, mm -hmm. but rather you consider uh, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease and other associations, okay, could be more, you know, related to it. Okay, my second question, is it possible to have a steroid telangiectasia inside the palate and inside the mouth or it has to be some kind of hereditary problem? Because I think the telangiectasia of steroid should be on the skin. With the usually skin. like the ones I have seen, the telangiectasia are usually over the skin, okay? Never the inside skin. the mouth, right? Or in the palate? Usually not, but I've seen patients with systemic sclerosis having telangiectasia. They can have, okay, but not like heterohemogic telangic tissues. Because I have seen so many patients now with HST and I have uh, had two or three regular patients, okay, for mocks for my candidates, okay. Mm -hmm. So they come and go. And I've seen like this patient, I know him for two years now, okay. And like this is his initial state, maybe three years back. And now he has come with more telangic tissues. I came in, I kept him <clears throat> in a follow -up. And he wasn't my patient initially, he was in other unit, okay? But, you know, we build good rapport with him. And he has mm -hmm. been coming for follow-ups three monthly to us. And he needs blood transfusion as well, okay? So we have seen that the number of telangiectasia that he had two years back, they have grown now. I mean, he has more telangiectasia in his body than he had two years back, okay? So that's a longitudinal mm -hmm. study that we have done on him. And we'll keep doing, see his survival if I live that long, inshallah. Okay. And I have appointed other doctors as well for this. So we, hopefully after so years, we'll advise, know. So you advise for us to say IPD rather than H, uh, HST? No, that's not. If you have a colostomy, why would you say it's HST? I mean, they can be telangiectasia for various reasons as well. Like patients with IBD can oh. be on steroids long term, can have telangiectasia, okay, over the face. 
All right, but can because have the candidate who gave us the experience, he was very sure that even it was on the pallet. So that's why he, this is what made him really confuse it with HHT. No, like and to be very honest, that if let, let me tell you one thing. Station one, like, hmm? if, if you ever have seen a patient with supervenacable obstruction, okay, that's under the diagnosis. These patients mm -hmm. also have these, uh, some venous engorgement. And when you see yeah. underneath their tongue, it feels like they have the lenticletia or these growths, okay? all over okay. the mouth, but they're not actually telangiectasias. They can give you a false impression. Okay. All right. Thank so mm -hmm. to, to so confirm much. it, I mean, basically this is a big weighted exam, the station one. Okay. So you better give differential, think more broad that why the patient would need a colostomy and scars in the abdomen in station one. First thing to consider would be IBD. If you have multiple scars, operation colostomy, allostomy, IBD. Then you go with other bowel malignancies, other situations, but you start with IBD. Okay. Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right. For You're welcome. <clears throat> so just to wrap up, wrap it up quickly, a patient with hereditary telangiectasia uh, or Oslo-Rebidendu syndrome would come to you in the exam with bleeding from different sites. It can be hidden bleed, GI bleeds, and patient can gradually become anemic. Patient can come to you with tiredness, they can be grossly, I mean, they can be severely pain, uh, pallor. They can come to you with hemoptysis. They can come to you with headache. Okay. So the headache is for AV malformation, or they can also be interventricular hemorrhages. So when you uh, review them or when you explore such patient, first of all, you explore the complaint. He has come to you with hemoptysis. So the first thing you would rule out the red flag that is this the first time or for how long he has been coughing up blood and how much blood has he coughed out? Does he have any chest pain at the moment? Okay, was it fresh blood? Okay, or it had an altered color change? Any bleeding from anywhere else? And does he have any awareness of his heartbeat now? Did he feel lightheaded? So whether he's hemodynamically stable or not, that's something to, uh, you know, like look after. So remember, for such a patient who comes to you with any acute bleeding, you should always look for the hemodynamic state of the patient. And if you notice in the that the observation chart shows you that the patient's blood pressure is on the low side, you first resuscitate the patient, give fluids, okay, correct the hemodynamic state. That's very important. Whatever bleed the patient comes to you with, whether it be from the nose, whether it be through bloody diarrhea, whether it be hematemesis, it's quite important to check the observation chart for the hemodynamic state of the patient. Now, once a patient is stable, and of course, in the exam, you'll have a stable patient, but still you need to look for the observation chart just to show the exam and you know what to look for. And furthermore, you're going to ask him, uh, have we ever needed any blood transfusion in the past? Just to, if you find someone anemic, you got to find out whether they have been anemic in the past, whether they needed any hematinics or blood transfusion in the past, a very important history to take. And he'll tell you, yes, I have had nose bleeds. But how long you have had these nose bleeds? Any other family members having similar nose bleeds like you? Look for any other risk factor, whether he has high blood pressure, whether he has any problem with his sinuses, whether he has to visit the ENT doctors for it. One of the close differential you have to rule out is uh, vasculitis, whether he's having any renal pulmonary syndrome. And that's why Dr. Keeva asked about my water work is there's any dark water. Okay, so those kind of things you have to watch out for. Ask him if he feels tired, okay? And he feels tired. So that's another symptom of uh, pallor, anemia, okay? Then quick systemic review, ask him if he has any headache anytime, okay? Also any family history of anyone having bleed inside the brain, okay? Ask him if he has had any throwing out of blood, any jaundice, the early discoloration alongside if he had any dark stool anytime. Is that also an important history to take, all right? Any easy bruising, very important patients on steroid, their proximal might be the easy bruising. You do not know if... Uh, you take the drug history, you can do now if he's on a blood thinner. Those kind of issues would be also very important. All right. Then any rashes, joint pain. And if he has a rash, look into it. Show me your rash. You notice that these are like purpurous. You ask him if it's painful, how long he has noticed them, whether they disappear any time, whether they're still there in relation with the sunlight. Blanch them. Ask the examiner that you need a glass. So things you need to have in hand quite close would be either a glass or a bottle. 
Even if you have a water bottle, you can use it to press it and check the blanching. You must check the blanching and this, this, if there's a small spots in the hand, you can blanch them with your finger, okay? So you are done with the confirmation that yes, you have got the telangic tissue and you're going to start your examination alongside. So ask for the observation chart if the patient has any postural drop. So any patient which is, who is hypovolumic might have a postural drop, might be feeling lightheaded. And if the patient has a postural drop, you would want to resuscitate the patient, give IV fluids and even arrange for blood. Okay, so you should have those things in mind. And for the check for this patient, you first start with the hands, check the pulse, go over and check his eyes, uh, estimate that he, or uh, try to give, get an idea that he has pallor and how severe it is, any jaundice you notice, then ask him to open the mouth and look for the telangic tissues, okay? Look, ask him if he has any other such rashes anywhere else. To just, so just look at the periphery first, the hands, limbs, and if you find any telangic tissue, then blanch it, okay? And you can ask him again if he has any headache, all right? And furthermore, you can just auscultate the lungs. When you auscultate, you're pretending to check if he has any brie, okay? The thing you can find is a brie. Now remember another thing I forgot to mention, sometimes they can have cyanosis as well. So you got to figure out that whether it's a central cyanosis or just peripheral cyanosis. If the patient just have peripheral cyanosis, not enough, the patient should have central cyanosis. That means the tip of the, you know, like tongue should be cyanosed, okay? Ask them if the patient has cyanosis, if they have raised temperature any time. Remember, these patients can have paradoxical emboli, okay? That means they have actually a right to left shunting, and that's happening at the level of the lungs. And that's why they have these, uh, even they can have clubbing, okay? These patients can also have clubbing because of this hypoxia over time, okay? So if this patient comes to you with raised temperature headache, you should also rule out if the patient could have a SOL, spesocoping lesion, the cerebral abscess. Okay, and then you auscult it over the liver. Okay, right hypochondrium. Why? Because these patients can also have AV malformation in the liver that can lead to portal hypertension and that can also lead to ascites. So sometimes, if you find ascites, then in the very rare but can happen in 30 to 70 percent cases, patients can come to you with a, in a portal hypertension. Okay, so for this patient. Since he has come to thermoptysis, you ask him that we need to do a scan and we need to also uh, do some tests, some camera tests, giving some dyes inside his vessel to see any vascular abnormality. And I explain to him that you have a condition which runs in families where there are abnormal blood vessels in different organs and sometimes they bleed and that can be hidden. And this bleed can also happen in your gut, which can't be seen in naked eye. So what we could do, we did to do various camera tests, we could do a blood count, okay? For the time being, we can monitor you in the short stay unit, okay? And once we run the scan and everything is fine, we can let him go home, all right? Remember, he's in the admission unit. Sometimes any bleeding from anywhere could be serious, okay? Am I clear? So for him particularly, what we're going to do, we are doing a chest exercise for him. We can arrange a you know, CT angiogram, okay? for this patient and we can figure out whether there is a vascular anomaly and later it can be corrected. It can be corrected with a surgery, thoracic surgeons, or it can be sometimes there are some procedures like embolization which can be tried. Am I clear? Dr. Keith, could you follow? Yes, that's clear. Okay, great. So make sure in the exam if you come across such a patient we do a review and there are some general things we check for them if especially if you find that patient is pale you got to check the ferritin iron profile for them okay you can suggest a complete blood count with peripheral blood film of course and it's quite often we need to check the ferritin and remember for the diagnosis there's a criteria i call it epic family tv that means you have epistaxis family history okay and t for telangic tissue v for visceral lesions so you if you find that it's a uh, like any kind of brie, you know that what viscerals have been involved. Okay? I hope that makes sense. All right. So what is the cause of the bronchial breathing? The... 
No, it wasn't a bronchial breathing actually. It was vesicular therapy uh, mentioned that it was a bronchial breathing. Okay. It was vesicular. I mean, the sound we played was a vesicular breath sound. Okay. All you can find, abnormality that you can expect could be a bruit somewhere. Okay. Uh, doctor, this was not a bruit in the in the audio. No, we didn't play a bruit for. We didn't play any bruit. I mean, that's what you can expect. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, someone shared to me that juvenile polyposis with HST syndrome has been reported in a few families. Does he need an emergency? I'm not sure. I have to look it up. Okay. I will look it up for sharing. So I, I don't know about this juvenile polyposis with HST syndrome. Okay. So thanks for sharing. I'll definitely look into it. That's a new information for me. All right. Coming to the other case here. So you rightly discovered that the patient has a device on here. Okay, you can see that the patient has a pacemaker. And this patient come to you with back pain. And it's kind of acute, dull, okay? So the approach of back pain is quite broad. It will take an hour. So I will just be very brief about it. In the exam, if you find a any patient with back pain, you got to evaluate its nature, whether it's mechanical or inflammatory. And mechanical back pains are more during the movement. Inflammatories are usually dull and they are at rest and they get better with activities. Oh, but, it's, but it's not as simple as it, you know, as we say it. Okay, in the exam, uh, some back pains, though it's uh, inflammatory or some, though it's mechanical, okay, it might have some mixture, okay. Cause of a paradoxical impulin HST, right to left shunt, doctor. Right to left shunt. The shunting happens at the level of uh, lungs. Okay, the blood vessel from the lungs. Okay, you have this right to left shunting. So anything from the right side can go to the left side of circulation. Usually such thing happens whenever you have a VSD, ASD or PDA. Okay, when someone develops this Eisenmenger syndrome or if you have an ASD or patent from an overly. But if you have any such circulatory defect where you're having shunting from the right to left, you can have a paradoxical emboli, okay? All right, coming back to this case, I'll just show the video that the thing that you needed to do actually in this exam. Uh, remember that station five is a focal station. So though your patient has some uh, visible findings on him, you shouldn't be overwhelmed with it and you shouldn't forget that you have to check the back. You forgot to check the back if someone comes to you with back pain, the first thing you check, show me your back. All right, doctor? So I think you were more uh, busy with the periphery rather than checking his back. Okay? So if you would have checked his back, you, you could have noticed, like, what's wrong with his back. So you, you, you could have gone to his back, let's say, and you need to make him, okay, like bend forward and you see where exactly has this pain okay so what we are considering for this case is a case of discitis okay and you got to establish risk factor like any recent surgeries any unhealed wound okay or if the patient had had any uh, history of shedding needles somewhere by, from which the infection could have spread and it's very important to check the observation chart for signs of sepsis, okay? 